<laughs> On this episode of Content Sessions, we're talking to Charlotte Daish about acting. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Absolutely. I'm finally glad we got to finally do it. I know you were crazy busy in the summer <laughs> yeah. doing insane amount of jobs and work. So <laughs> that's cool. So tell me a little bit about uh, your career and how, what you're doing. Yeah. So um, I actually started out in Norway. I'm Norwegian. I was born and raised there. Um, but um, moved to Toronto a year ago and sort of wanted to um, see what I was able to do here in, in acting and acting primarily. I also do a little bit of um, TV presenting and modeling here and there. And, um, you know, Toronto has a much bigger market than, um, than Norway, sure. I don't, yeah. you can probably imagine. Yeah. Good guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was sort of really happy with things that I've done in Norway and I wanted to sort of take that next step and um, you know they call Toronto Hollywood North mm. um, and I reached out to some agents here and was able to get a good agent and just kind of decided to make the move um, and see where it could go so since coming here I've done a lot of commercials um, some TV some film and been doing quite a bit of modeling as well and a little bit of TV presenting so it's been an amazing combo and I feel so lucky and so blessed to be able to have come, you know, to a new, new country and sort of created a life for myself here and do it full time and, and sort of just really enjoying and, and loving what I do. Got it. And what were, the, were there any limitations from going over there? I know there's certain um, communities or uh, something that you have to have from an acting standpoint. Was that an easy transition for you to come over? Um, no, I mean, it hasn't. It's been relatively easy. I feel like sometimes when things are flowing, that's kind of how you know it's the right thing. And it's definitely been flowing since I came here and even before like applying for my work visa. Um, there are some things that, you know, you need to be like a permanent citizen to get like a CAVCO number and, oh, okay. and those kind of things because um, they want um, people that they can get tax. They want to hire like Canadian residents. Got so, it. but that's all coming along very well. So definitely like a couple little um, things here and there and, you know, nobody really knows who I am here and, and um, having to, you know, get in front of the right people and really, I didn't really know anyone either. So mm -hmm. I had to really, you know, get out there and connect with people and yeah. network. Did you actually start from like zero people here? I think Pretty, I, I knew a yeah. couple of people from Actually, I studied in Australia, mm. so I knew a couple of people from there. Uh, a ton of Canadians yeah. um, at my uni university um, in Australia. So I was kind of that's kind of what opened my eyes to to coming to Toronto as well, because I just thought so highly of you Canadians. I was like, these <laughs> these people are amazing. They're Good so people, yeah, yeah <laughs> so outgoing and friendly and genuine. And I was just so drawn to you guys. So. Um, and so, yeah, I knew a couple of them, but just kind of like not anyone close um, that was from here. But, you know, I, I did the same thing in Australia. I went there. I didn't know anybody. And I'm sort of, you know, I'm pretty outgoing and, I, I, and, and I'm able to connect with people. Did the same thing in New York while I did my acting studies there. I just kind of went there and, you know, didn't really know anyone. Mm. So when you have done that before, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Got it. Um, so, so yeah, but I really needed to like network and I was, you know, I just kind of did whatever I could. And now I feel like I got incredibly lucky. I, I was, I, I moved here just before TIFF last year and was able to kind of, I really lucked out and met some amazing people that were, were able to, you know, get me into the right parties and, and sort of, you know, make connections with some incredibly talented people that have become really close friends of mine. Um, so yeah, I think I've just been really lucky. Nice. Yeah. What would you say your best, what would you say your best advice is? Cause I mean, obviously you've gone now to a couple of places knowing nobody kind of built a network, started yeah. everything up yeah. for people that are kind of, even if it's not from the acting perspective, from mm -hmm. just starting off in a new place, how, what's something that you've kind of taken away from the couple of times you've done it? Yeah. So you definitely can't be lazy. <laughs> you, you really have to come there with I think attitude is also incredibly important in anything in life, but especially when you come to a new place. You have to have a great attitude and you have to sort of say to yourself, I'm here, I'm going to create this incredible life for myself. And I know that people will value from, will, you know, get value from being my friend. And, you know, I'm, I know that I'm a good person. I know that I'm a good friend. And you have to kind of believe in that. And you have to, to sort of reach out to people and just kind of, 
yeah, don't hold back. Just kind of go to places, like go to events. Um, yeah, especially that go to events when you're out doing work, you know, connect with the people you're working with. For me, one of the most important um, things have been when I'm on set and doing a job, you know, don't just sit and look at your phone. Like, talk to the people around you, um, wherever you are, and make an effort to get to know someone. Yeah. Um, really show them that you're listening. Um, you know, people want to feel seen and heard. And yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just really getting out there any way that you can and believing um, that you're kind of worth knowing, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I love that. No, self-confidence. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> Very cool. So now so now you're here um, and you live in the city? I do. I live downtown, yeah. Cool. And so how are you finding work now? Is it primarily through an agent? Are you, how are you kind of networking that way? Um, so yes, I have an acting agent and I have a modeling agent as well. And then I also have a manager. So, and then I also, um, there are also casting websites that you have to apply to yourself mm. um, that don't go through the agents or um, the manager. So, um, so I self-submit for things as well. Sometimes I get people contact me directly. Um, I might, you know, give them my manager's email. But um, so between um, my agents, my manager and myself submitting, we were all submitting kind of thing. Right. So, um I think that you just, you know, it's such a competitive industry. Yeah. Yeah. So that you, you can't fully rely on your agent. You really, really can't. You have to sort of be your own agent as well. Um, yes, absolutely have an agent. They're amazing and they can do great things for you. They can get you into the right rooms. Agents give you opportunities, right? It's up to you to, to take that opportunity and to, to, to really show at an audition that you're the right person for the part. Got it. They can't give you the part. They can give you the opportunity. Got it. Um, and so I think that you have to be extremely driven and, you know, coming back to like, you can't be lazy. Um, no. You have to really put in the effort to find the jobs and to really, really not just rely on other people because at the end of the day, no one is going to work harder for you than you. Sure. Yeah. Well, and I think anybody that follows you online can tell. Yeah. Like I watch the stories and I'm like, how is she in like three different places all in one day <laughs> bouncing around TTC, this station, yeah. that station. So yeah, it's really, it's really admirable. Like it feels like, I, and it's funny, I actually know a couple of people that are in the acting game that rely pr just, oh, if my agent calls or something comes up, great. Yeah. But it seems like you're really just kind of taking it by the horns and moving oh, forward. Oh, absolutely. I found a lot of the jobs that I do myself too, you know, through networking, for instance, or, um, you know, even like, even on Facebook, you know, there yeah. are Facebook groups and they have some, some good postings there mm -hmm. about jobs. Yeah. And I will apply for those. Absolutely, I will. And, you know, through Instagram as well, which we'll dive more into yeah. later, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, people will, will contact me through Instagram, having seen my page or having found me on a hashtag. Yep. Um, so I think you just need to be incredibly proactive, sort of looking at all the different ways that you can get work yeah. and sort of for me it's been great because I haven't I didn't haven't had the need to have like another, another part-time job which really allows me to fully focus on it and I think that that's what it takes like you need to it needs your full attention sure. kind of thing yeah makes sense yeah yeah and so how do you uh, market yourself we're talking a little bit about Instagram networking showing up making connections mm -hmm. those those are all excellent yeah. what would you say your biggest kind of focus is or do you kind of spread your attention to a little bit of everything so I try to be pretty active on on social media and I, I really strive to have a strong online presence um you know I don't really look at it as as a, as a personal as a personal accounts anymore it's like right. a professional account yep. it's part of my career it's part of my the, the work that I do um so I think uh, it, it's primarily I'd say I'm most active on Instagram and then it's Facebook Facebook page and then Twitter I, I try, yeah. you know, I put something up here and there, but it's definitely not my strongest yeah. platform. But I mean, it, it, it it's polished, like it, it looks good. Like it's, it's, it's something that, you know, I want to always make sure that it's something that I can be proud of. I want all of my platforms to always be um, reflective of, of who I am and, and sort of have them always um, be appealing or attractive to potential um, employees. Got it. Yeah. And how do you handle that now? Are you doing like all the editing and all the creation? 
I'm nice. doing all of it myself. Got it. I have kind of just had to fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. I've had to look at it as a hobby um, as well as part of my career, but I ha I've had to find a way to really enjoy doing it. Um, so I, I have fun with it. Like I like doing it. Like I enjoy putting up posts and, yeah. you know, writing captions and, um, but it, you know, it takes a lot of time. It's a lot of work. Yeah, sure. And, and I'm also kind of like, you know, how much time should I be putting in? Because I'm busy. Like sometimes right. it's like, I just don't have the time to post for a few days. And then I feel like I should have been posting or, and then sometimes if I spend too much time on my social media, I'm like, oh, no, I shouldn't probably be spending. And it's like, um, it's hard for me to like find the balance of yeah. how much time I should be putting into these platforms mm -hmm. and, um, or if I should be just focusing on other things. Right. Got it. Got yeah. it. Are you using any kind of scheduling tools right now? I am actually not. No, no. I think you're leaving a lot of time and energy on yeah. the table with it. Yeah. yeah. There's I one, that. <laughs> so there's a, so it's weird with them. So actually I had a company from Germany just called me up the other day and like, Hey, do you want to like demo our product? And so one of the big things that a lot of the major providers are missing are the ability to actually schedule Instagram. Yeah. I can't believe how many of them are missing it. And mm -hmm. that was the first thing I asked. I'm like, I could try it out, but like scheduling Instagram, they're like, no, we just send you an alert. I'm like, I'm out. Yeah. Things are coming out. Um, Agora Pulse is by far the best that we found and he, like on the kind of smaller plan and that way on the days where you don't necessarily have the time but you've got the pictures you can at least you know have stuff going out i think the consistency on the platforms especially with the reach of everything i'm sure you're seeing it too like every time you post less and less people are seeing it even if you're using all the best practice have you been noticing that in the last little bit uh, i noticed that it's you know, it varies how many likes a photo will get, that sort of thing. And then it also, I find that I get more engagement on Instagram than on my Facebook page, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Facebook's hurting right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little tricky. It's almost yeah. like, oh, do I want to put a post off? Because I don't know how many likes it will get, you know what I mean? But, yeah. um, you know, you just, you got to just keep posting, right? <laughs> That's right. Do you pay attention um, in your Instagram statistics to the actual, the reach though? Not the likes, but actual like net people reached um see this is stuff that i need to get better at like i yeah. need to sort of get more into seeing that kind of thing and looking at my analytics and and looking at who my audience is and that's one of the reasons i would really wanted to come onto the podcast today to learn more about it as well yeah because it is so important um to not just kind of shoot and and not have like that target right yeah um yeah absolutely so one thing i would consider is um on the insights portion inside the app. Yeah. So what you want to see is the, it'll show you the average likes and how many likes on each post, mm -hmm. which will give you some indicators because those are yes, good to know, absolutely. okay, this people seem to respond to this more than this yes. or whatever the case may be. And I be. do see that. Yeah. Mm. But what I would do is, so if you take, what I usually recommend is like take your last 10 posts mm -hmm. and look at them from the insights on the individual post. Mm -hmm. Cause what it's going to show you is it's going to show you how many unique people it reached. So the impressions are how many total eyeballs. But the reach is the unique people. So if you have, if you reach two and you have four impressions, it means those two people saw it twice. Oh, so you want to okay. see the reach is how many individuals. Mm -hmm. So from that, it will break down um, on the individual post size. Uh, how many came from your feed? How many discovered it from discovery? How many discovered it from hashtags? And then uh, I can't remember the other metric in there, yeah. but that's actually really interesting, especially if you're Very testing different hashtags where you're saying, I wonder if these are actually getting me yes. any help or is yes. it in the discovery feed? So if you take a look at the kind of your last like 10 posts, mm -hmm. what we usually find is it's like 70% from yours and then like 15 discovery, 15% hashtags, okay. like it's kind of the... Yeah general rule mm -hmm. but you may find if you're using certain hashtags that maybe are underutilized or not as you know people aren't beating them over the head as hard mm -hmm. that um those might give you a bigger reach on the hashtag basis hashtags are super weird though like we like a year ago it was like hey use the most like niche specific ones and like don't use any of the big broad three million uses ones at all yes I and remember then, that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, the reach on those just went to shit. And we're like, what? Yeah. They're not working at all. So then we went back to the major ones because Instagram, basically, they changed something to basically say, hey, we know what you're going to want to see. Yeah. 
So we're gonna curate it and then the hashtags will have some impact but not the same impact as it did before, which I don't know, right? If they're I feel using- like it's so like, people are a bit like, there's like rumors here and there about it, but mm. no one really knows for sure. Like Nobody. Instagram is so fascinating <laughs> like that, you yeah. know, with the, you know, there's so much like hype about these algorithms and mm -hmm. like, what are they actually doing? How are they actually working? I remember I heard something about, you know, before it was like, you know, always use the 30 hashtags. Mm -hmm. But now I've started to hear that you shouldn't use all of them because Instagram can like look at it as spam or something and right. that you should go much lower than that. Yeah. And there's even, there's even hashtags that are completely banned, like blacklisted hashtags. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of very peculiar ones. And then there's like ones where you would like, you're like, you're not supposed to use Thanksgiving. Really? What, are, what is one of the... I think I think hashtag Thanksgiving is on... It was, at one point, it was on the list. Really? That's because it was being used in certain communities as something inappropriate. Okay, um, yeah. And so so that was on a list. And we yeah. were like, well, but what if it's Thanksgiving? So you just kind of never know what's right. on the list so for there whatever is, reason. Right? Yeah, so there is a website that posts what the different ones that you're not supposed to use are. At all times. So okay. we keep an eye on it. I don't yeah. know. It's not official. So I don't know if it's like perfectly kept up to date, but at least it gives us a sense of like, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. Um, one thing we've been using is a, a an app. Do you have Apple? Are you? Uh, yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. So it's uh, the app is called Tags. And so you put in a hashtag and it will kind of give you a burst of different ones around that same idea. Have used that. Yeah. 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 I like that a lot. Yeah. I even find if I run that search again, like 60 days later, even the ones that it pulls in, like the top ones are different. And so we're constantly changing them. Like every 30 days, I'll put my kind of top four that we use in. Um, and then it'll give us like, a, here's the 15 that we recommend that come with it. And sometimes they're different. So we just switch them out like once a, once a month. Because um, we actually do work with a couple of hip hop artists. And so and they've got pretty substantial following. So it's been interesting to see from that side, like what those little changes do at the scale of like a couple million versus 2,000. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it's like it, massive amounts of decision making happens and we're actually using those learnings to work on the smaller accounts because like oh this isn't working anymore this is happening or that's happening so being able to see the insights at a bigger picture has been interesting so yeah i would keep an eye on like flipping the hashtags out even if you use your base yeah i've heard like never use the same you know hat like the same mm -hmm. hashtags like exactly because I don't know about that. Really? I haven't heard that, yeah. Okay, yeah. But you hear so many different things, right? Mm -hmm. it's so, confusing. so what the key is, so I, I would say what you should do is once a month, take a look at a stretch of five to seven of your posts mm -hmm. um, and, and do that kind of deep analysis on each one, like the insight of that exact post. Because I think what you'll see is, oh, you know, I, you know, these pocket of hashtags I use, my reach went down. And then you can test that to see if it's just, that or if it was just a fluke with the picture yeah but if you um either monitor on a spreadsheet i think there's probably some apps that you can use that help you like lay it out and see it um we haven't found any of them that are like that great instagram mm -hmm. has a weird thing about like not liking tools attaching to their shit like they mm. just don't like it so even even agora pulse being able to post instagram i feel like they don't like they don't like it yeah um and so we've implemented a bunch of different tools and little pieces of software here and there and like oftentimes like within a month or two months they like they're disconnected from instagram now but you might find one that gives you that breakdown and i think it's really important if you're posting five six times a week would you say i yeah so i it really depends yeah. i have to say like because i'm kind of doing it myself and i don't have that scheduling right. on software yet I, I try to aim to post like once a day right but that doesn't always happen definitely it right. doesn't sometimes it can be like four days without anything right and then I might do like five days every day Got and it. then yeah <laughs> um one thing to think about is um taking a look at the insights kind of monitoring okay I feel like this is the thing that's working and then just ride that until it stops working <laughs> and then like just keep testing and switching but if you I would say if you like every three weeks or month you took a look take a look at the last like the last five mm -hmm. with those with the breakdown of uh, unique reach based on the different categories I think it'll give you an idea of like what is working and what isn't working and not to say that it's going to stay alive for long because yeah. that's just the game we're all playing right now yeah but I think it would allow you to make better decisions and get a little bit more of a push absolutely until it stops working yeah no I think that <laughs> yeah. sounds great definitely we'll yeah. do that yeah 
And so how, um, how are you creating most of the content? I know you've got different pictures. You take pictures when you're doing different projects. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a lot of like banked photography? So, so the way I kind of get my content is, well, first of all, I'm like known as like the behind the scenes queen in my industry. <laughs> Anyone who works with me, they're like, they're like, yeah, like you always do the old behind the scenes. Right. Um, but I, I do like to, um, and I always ask people like, can we, can we just take a couple of behind the scenes photos? But I do like to do that because um, I find that that fills up a lot of the content in my Instagram stories yeah. because I want to take people behind the scenes a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think about what I would have wanted to see from someone. And, you know, you, I want to take them behind, you know, yeah, behind the yeah. scene and sort of give them those unique insights that they wouldn't necessarily get. Um, so, yeah, I definitely say behind the scenes stuff and a lot of like when I do photo shoots, um, I will use those photos Either I will post um, the photo being like loved shooting with this and this brand, mm. for instance, and kind of like promoting the brand a little bit, mm. or I will use them and I'll just put a caption. I'll say something that's like something on my mind or like, for instance, today is like World Kindness Day. So I used a photo from the photo shoot that I did and mm. I just kind of use that photo to write like a nice caption about like kindness. And then, yeah, so behind the scenes, I'll use a lot of the photos from the different photo shoots um, for either caption or to say this is like the job that I did for these guys loved right. working with so-and-so. And I'll also try to post a lot of, I try to post videos because I want it to be really, um, I want it to be, you know, it's an online portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a showreel. So um, I have to think about the fact that like my goal is to sort of, you know, you want to be, I want to be more attractive as an actor right. to anyone who, so I try to think of it as like an, an additional little competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a good Instagram account, yes. that can actually maybe help well, you get the no job. No question. No yes. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, and more and more so, like they will actually, especially in modeling, they will sometimes, if it's between two models, they will go with the model who has more followers because yeah. it's extra exposure for the brand because when I'm out doing things you know I will in my BTS behind the scenes yeah. I will tag you know the brand and I will post about usually I'll post about it afterwards like in an actual post and I will tag everyone so it's like exposure for the brand mm -hmm. so I totally understand it but that's why it's like so important and I um so back to what I was saying so I try to look at it as a sort of showreel so Anytime I've done any work, I try to, you know, get the footage, post um, however long inter Instagram lets you do the videos. Like, yeah. I think it's a minute or so. On um, feed, yeah, a minute. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I try to post clips from work that I've done, um, commercials, film, television, so that those casting directors um, can, can look at other stuff that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's usually what fills up my... Um, you know content and then once in a while I've started doing this where I post just a picture of a quote and it's the same design so it's kind of they come I, I try to put them in every like so after like 10 photos or yep. videos I put in like the quote mm -hmm. um, just to kind of have a bit more depth into like because I really like those like quotes and like right. I, I yeah. like to inspire people and so I want them to be in there and I think it's just instead of it just being photos and videos, it kind of adds a little bit to it. Texture. Yeah. It adds a bit of a break too. Yeah, because a break. If it's, yeah, yeah. Because it's, if there's always just people in different directions, it, it does look very busy. And that does help. A lot of people use it to help like center and, and make a little bit of calm within the grid. So yeah, yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that just so that, you know, that people can scroll through, but they can also get little snippets of yeah. inspiration while they're scrolling through. You know, something I think would work really well for you is I, and you do it sometimes, but I know um, there's a lot of people that are starting to do it where they're talking to the camera a lot more. Yeah. Having explaining, having conversation. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. So I really kind of like the idea of I was thinking about it for stories, and I'm actually thinking about it for the posts as well. So when you're posting clips of whatever, and you're tagging everything, and you've got captioning, and that's fine. But have you ever thought about having like an intro story? 
Hey, I've got a clip on my thing. It's like, and then having it finish off as a new post. Hey, we were here, we were doing this and it was an amazing experience and I got this much out of it and I learned this, I learned that. Check out the clip and then push it back. So that kind of gives you a couple of stories for that day when you're gonna post a clip anyway. I love that idea and I haven't really been doing that. And the other thing that actually literally just popped into my head is you could almost, so the same way you would do like a carousel. So you'd have like the, the actual real video first and then the second video be you introducing and talking about it. Yeah. And then that, if, if it's a producer or somebody that's interested, it's not, they're not just seeing the acting clip. They could actually have some And I can insights. talk about, you know, maybe my preparation for that mm -hmm. character or, or how we shot it and like the, give it a little bit more of like an, more insight. Right. Yeah. 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 So. That's an, that's an excellent idea. And the thing I like about it is as long as you put the clip first, then it is just hidden behind the, yeah. the first clip, right? So, so it's if not, people are actually interested, they can sort of, yeah, right. make the effort to swipe. Yeah. But yeah, but then it's not just like a picture of, it's just right. you centered on yeah. the grid. You wouldn't see that. It would only, you'd only see the main one. And exactly. Then, yeah. So that might be cool. And then I think that gives, because one thing that I've been thinking a lot about, and so when we do voice DMing to invite people on, mm -hmm. I like putting my personality out first. So someone mm -hmm. can be like, does this guy sound like interesting or does he sound like I don't want to talk to him? Yeah. I like them vetting that process. And I think that would help with you too, right? Yeah. Seeing somebody acting is like in a different state of mind. It's in a different environment, a different ecosystem. But then they're like, oh, what else? Oh, and then they hear you and oh, she's very like sweet and articulate and well thought out. I really like this person. And I think that might help for those types of pieces of content. No, I think you're very right. You know, mm -hmm. people want to get to know the person and that is an excellent way of doing it yeah um absolutely yeah and then that's one thing that i you know i see other people doing you know they're they're doing these little videos especially in the stories and like telling yeah. people about their day or or other things but that's not something i've been doing a lot yeah and i definitely know that that's something i want to get better at doing it's intimidating because it's like because very I think raw. that's the reason. Yeah, you just like say you're like, how does my face start when I'm going to do that? I hate it. And I've like <laughs> been slowly getting better, but like it's bad. And I always have this like kind of dumb half smug look because I don't know how to start my mm -hmm. face looking at the camera. So I, it always looks awful when it starts. But I just like, you just kind of get yeah. in the habit. I think that's mm -hmm. great because it, in a world now where like, it's harder to get people more, even just like the reach, even if you post, if people follow you, most of them aren't seeing the post anymore. Mm. So stories is a really great way to keep people coming back. Yeah. And, and I do find there's a lot of engagement in my story. Like I feel like it gets a lot of, of views and like mm -hmm. even more so than, than some of the posts maybe, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think helping to anchor the posts and keep attention on, on your profile yeah. might just be a way to keep kind of adding it in. Yeah. Um, I've often contemplated like kind of like a, like I'm not going to do it but it was in my head of like <laughs> so I started this video journal um on an app called Journey cool because I was like I'm not the kind of guy who will get go like see someone and talk about feelings but I was like you know I have thoughts and at the end of the day if they're kind of bouncing around I've it's nice that, to get them out yeah and I've heard that can be incredibly therapeutic it is yeah and for a guy who like I don't do that well with emotion <laughs> um I, I'm finding I'm talking it's like two minutes and I'm talking and I'm like Oh, you know what? I don't like how this went. I didn't like this interaction. This pissed me off. This was great. Like, and I, I'm just, it's just kind of coming out. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't suggest putting that, like that's a little bit too yeah. much, <laughs> too but I've, I've thought about kind of that 20 second version of like, I was in this meeting and I learned this or. So maybe a reflection of yes, what you did in the video. I've been playing with yeah. the idea because yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, drilling in that personality. I, you haven't met Jenny yet, but she has a great brand around like climbing and mental health and wellness. And she Amazing. talks to the camera all the time, like yeah. six stories worth a day. Like well, always. Well, people connect more with that because they mm -hmm. feel like you're looking at them, right? And they're looking you in the eye. Yeah. It's like you're almost talking to them. And her following is like, not only is the page engagement really, really high, but her following is like, so uh, maybe a month ago, she was in BC and yeah. had her uh, camping stuff stolen out of the car. It was like really expensive tent and oh, like no. all this stuff. And she yeah. was like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. So she did a post about it on Instagram, not expect, like just guys, like, and she has a cadence of talking to the audience, the people that follow her. Hey guys, this happened. It really sucked. I'm like a little heartbroken about it. Da, 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 da. Literally within six hours, she had a certain amount of money sent from just people saying, Hey, use this money to replace your stuff. Oh, we wow. still have packages coming in. 
there's been 30, almost 30 packages of like people wow. replacing the gear and it's too much. So we're holding oh it, to, we're holding onto it to pay it forward at some point. Um, but just her, her. This is why I love Canadians. Yeah. Incredible people. <laughs> but I think because she is vulnerable and has those conversations, people feel that deeper connection. Exactly. And it's not necessarily blasting the following up, yeah. but I think the, 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 the brand affinity, if you will. Yeah. I think it, it really builds when you're doing it. Well, you know, being real and being authentic is, is really, you know, it, it's like trending right now as well. Mm. Like you see a lot of people, just a lot of women just posting, you know, no makeup selfies and right. just being raw and mm. vulnerable and honest and not trying to put on that like perfect picture, sure. you know, because, you know, nobody is perfect mm -hmm. and people like to see that, especially, yeah. um, you know, those bigger names, people love, you know, seeing you know who they really are and like seeing that oh oh she's just you know human like i am right, right? right, right. yeah yeah that's fair one other thing i was thinking about so when you have a project that goes out yeah um so it's you know, not a commercial it wouldn't really work but like a, a film that somebody could potentially like do you do stuff where like people could rent it online to watch like so, stuff that goes out that way um, I try to like, so I, 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 I don't like that you can't put like a link in the actual caption. Can you imagine how nice that would be? Yeah. No. Yeah. So I try, like sometimes I'll put like, oh, link in bio right. and that kind of stuff and kind of link back to where people can, mm -hmm. can see it or get it. Um, so I do try to do that. Um, but, but, um, because you, you can only have that one link, I'd like to have my website there because right. on my website, they can, you know, I, I link to a lot of stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes I will link to it or, um, you know, when you get to like, you can have that like scroll up. Yeah, the that's kind of a nice um, feature as well. The reason I was thinking about it is, so most people don't like from there, like this is my branded Instagram. They don't think I'm going to run ads on here. It's a little counterintuitive, it can kind of feel weird, but I actually kind of like the idea and I think it helps promote and build rapport with the people that brought you into the project. Mm -hmm. But you could actually run like Instagram story ads, talking and introducing it, and then having like a swipe up swipe to up. the download. Yeah. You don't have to spend a lot. Yeah. And the way that you can do it is you can target it based on like either a similar movie or the genre of movie. Those mm -hmm. are all things that you can choose to target by. Yeah. So if it's a horror movie, target people with horror genre and just run like a 10 or $15 swipe up on Instagram. Hey, I was just in this movie. You might mm -hmm. not know me. My name's Charlotte. Love you to check it out if you're a horror fan. And you know they're horror yeah, fans because you've that's already. Great. Yeah. And then, because I think what would happen is then you tag all the other people involved. So then they see more interaction with their stuff. But I think it would actually drive people. Who the hell is this girl doing random promotion? Yeah. That's kind of cool to bring people back. It, again, sure. if you kind of talk and introduce it, tag whatever, and then make the swipe up to go get the movie. It doesn't have an, it doesn't really pay you back. There's no like monetization of it. But I think maybe playing around with like 20 bucks. No, here but I think there, at the end of the day, like the more people that watch the movie, the better for me as well. So it does benefit me, right. you know? Yeah. And I think that would help. So again, it's like you have a certain following and a certain amount of people see it. And every day it feels like it's like a little bit less of my actual audience gets to see my stuff. That's just kind of the way Instagram's going. Really? So I like allocating because we don't spend a lot, but we, mm. you know, we allocate a certain couple of dollars every month to promote different pieces. Now ours are a little bit different. Like, Hey, we made this resource. Do you want to download it? It's a little bit, but I think that could work for you because yeah. it keeps the level of engagement up with your page yeah. and you're playing Instagram's game. They yeah. want you to buy the ads. So do they sort of, um, do they give you any kind of reward for doing that? Like, because I've heard that like, you who know knows? what I mean? Like, who knows? <laughs> I have it's no, such a game. <laughs> no idea. But what I do know is, um, especially when we run like Instagram story type stuff, we see the profile views and the touch points with the brand go quite well. Um, so I just like them from, it gives us the extra exposure. And you can like, with Instagram story ads, you could, again, put like 20 bucks and get yeah. like a couple thousand views That's and a great, handful yeah. of swipe ups. And it kind of works towards a project yeah. and helps drag some people in, but just kind of gets your brand out there a little bit more. Yeah. So that might be cool. And I, again, I think the targeting you keep super simple. If it's like really similar to another movie, you target the people that are interested in that movie. And if there's not really anything, then you can target the genre of movie. Hey, yeah. are you a horror fan? And then you can yeah. actually like address 
the the, the people watching the ad like this. Hey, yeah. are you a horror fan? Are you yeah, a fan of action speak movies? Speak to them directly. Right. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. yeah. Or I made this movie. Yeah. You can download it for two bucks, five bucks, whatever. Yeah. Swipe up. That might be a cool idea. Again, I think I like the idea of playing an Instagram's game. We we advertise the podcast and we advertise a lot of different stuff. And it's it's not leading to anything that's we're selling. It's just putting more eyeballs. Yeah. And as our reach drops, the ads, the 20 bucks, the 30 bucks, whatever a month, uh, gets it back out there, kind of helps yeah. level that playing field a bit. Yeah, so that might be something to play with. At least yeah. like test and see if you get a good feel from it. For sure. Yeah. 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 yeah and you should just get over that like initial like fear, of just like putting the camera to my face. Like I, yeah. I never do like selfies or that kind right. of stuff. But like you know, I just gotta gotta do it a little bit for yeah. sure. It's practice. It's and practice, but you know, it's important to get out of your comfort zone. Like, absolutely. You need to do that. Yeah. Try to do that at least once a day. <laughs> yeah. You know how I've actually completely, I just don't care about it anymore. I, I got this app called Bonjuro. And so if somebody uh, downloads one of our resources or they sign up for our LinkedIn course, um, it comes to my phone and my phone says, Hey, Charlie just signed up for this. And I can click, I click it and it starts video recording me and I'm sending Charlie a message. Okay. And then I sit, I hit send and right from the app and it goes out to that person and it's a personalized thank you. That's great. So I do it for everybody that joins our mailing list, everybody yeah. that comes into our ecosystem. So I'm doing like 20 to 30 a day. <laughs> so you're really getting your practice in. I'm getting so much practice. You must be so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's very, yeah, it, yeah. You get, you get over it. By the time I actually yeah. got a notification from them, it was the cutest thing. So they're like very community oriented yeah. company. I got a, th a notification saying, Hey, you just sent your 300th Bonjuro. We're sending you a bear suit oh. in the mail. What's your address? And I'm like, a bear suit. That's bear incredible. Suit. Yeah, like a little pullover yeah. one. It's fuzzy. And Did shit. you get it yet? Not yet. No. Oh my gosh, no, you have to send me a photo of that <laughs> I will. I will. while you put while you have it on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, and like I said, I think it's just sending those messages out. And so the way that you might be able to do it is if you actually this is I really like this idea for you too. You know, on Instagram DM, you can send video or audio. Uh, yeah. So maybe if you've got somebody that like is new to the page that likes some stuff or leaves a nice comment for you, maybe even going to them and recording a message and saying, Hey, I just wanted to thank you so much for your support. Your comment was super sweet. I love you for it. That goes to their DM and then guaranteed like they screenshot it, share it. They tag you in it being like, Oh my God, I can't believe I got like a message from her. Yeah. Cause I actually remember, um, mm. someone I really follow and admire and I think I, um, I, think I tagged her in something right. when I was reading her book or something mm. like that. Um, and then she actually responded, like she commented and she actually right. sent me a message as well, like a, mm. a DM. And I was just like, like you just explained, like, yeah. wow. And I just thought that it just felt really good, you know? Yeah. So I, yeah, I think that's a great idea because it really makes people feel like, you know, they're valued and, and you really got to show your followers love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you could do it at so the way again with bonjour it's like comes into the app but you could just go through like while you're in transit or while you're whatever just go through the last five posts whatever comments <laughs> hey i just want to thank yeah, you yeah i love using the downtime as much as possible yeah yeah and i'll tell you that facetime of just like i'm gonna and the thing i like about especially the voice is when you hold the record button you can't stop it so whatever you say, like, there's no, like, no, I don't want to send this anymore. It just oh. goes, which I realized because a couple of times I was like, oh, shit. Uh, wait. And then I let go and it oh. sends and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> but after that happens, like, five or six times, you're just like, it really doesn't matter. Like, yeah. this happens to everybody and, yeah. like, fuck it. Yeah. Just go for it. Yeah. So I think those kind of ideas to help build that extra level of engagement yeah. could be could work really, really well for you. And I think I'm also just very, um, with that, it's like I try to... You know, I don't want to, like, I don't want to just put up something just to put up something because yeah. I don't want to waste people's time. Right. Like, I want them to, to not just, I want them to get something from mm. looking at what I post or, like, I want them right. to feel something or, like, inspire them in one way or another. So I always try to think about, like, how can I create value for my audience? Like, because I don't just want to be posting, like, yeah. look at this or look at that. Right. So that's, like, been something that I've really been trying to work on and sort of think, well, I can post this photo, but how can I post it in a way that um, that someone can get something out of it? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's also important and something I've been trying to do more and more. Just be like, you know, why should the person care? Yeah. Like, why should they follow me? Yep. Because people, you know, at the end of the day, 
um, you know, your friends and family, like they, you know, love seeing what you're, you're up to. Right, yeah. But, you know, you want to engage with other people as well. And you want and, and they're not going to follow something that they're not gaining something from. Right. Like they're, they're, you're, they're, you're never going to really follow an account that you're just not getting anything from. Yep. People are just like that. They want to, you know, know what's in it for them. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the thing I'm trying to, to be more focused on yeah. as well. But don't. So one thing I suggest is don't go to the far end of the earth being like every piece of content has to be this magnificent. No, and, because, it, and it doesn't. Right. Yeah. Because I think, so there's there's three kind of main reasons that people follow. It's information, mm -hmm. entertainment, or motivation. Yeah. And so as long as there's some, some hint, kind piece of, of one it. of those things in Yeah. It, and even just mm -hmm. if I am just posting a modeling photo and mm -hmm. sometimes I just, I'll just post a photo with like an emoji and like yeah. the photographer. Because I see a lot of other models doing that, mm -hmm. and and um, and believe it or not, those photos tend to get you know most of the likes. Yeah. And I think that well, then I'm like, okay, well, well, why? And like, what kind of value? Well, maybe it's the the outfit. They just love to get some kind of fashion inspiration, mm -hmm. or it's the f there's other photographers following me, and they're like, oh, cool photo, or like they get some kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think val that value can come in many different forms. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think adding those couple of, of community engagement pieces, because I think, you know, the photographer that responded being like, oh, this is amazing. And then you kind of like, you hearted the comment. Yeah. That's cool. But yeah. can you imagine if they were like kind of a fan already and then you, they got like either a voice or a quick yeah. ten, 10 second video. Yeah. Like, I think that would start to just blow. Up. And I think that keeps people and what i've experienced is that keeps people coming back and liking everything you put out always oh, which I helps yeah. instagram if, if they're seeing the signals of like man people are just all over every everything she posts this is amazing so i think that will help on the organic side as well yeah, yeah. because you know i do see those you know i get many different people commenting but you know you always see that that those people who tend to you know comment on all your photos like I'm, I'm like starting to see those like some of the same yeah. names and and especially those people like deserve a little um yeah. little thanks so mm -hmm. i think i will definitely um do that yeah. yeah my last kind of thought it was something i had at the beginning but i, I just kind of i think yeah. it would help one thing that most people don't do i don't do but some a lot of people do and it actually like you wouldn't believe some i've read some of the responses that come in on other people's channels is taking surveys or polls in the stories yes. what do you like to see tell me the tell me what you like to see or do you want to see more a b or c or just yes. giving people the I've ability people to say that i and the give the, them a voice and a say in and, what they want to see and that right? will help a determine what else you should be making yeah. number one um, and what people what will get people to respond more so i think there's a huge power in that yeah. to take advantage it's of excellent research yes yeah. yeah it's like you know that is your audience right there yeah that are voting for this yeah so and i've seen people do that and i do find that i do press you know i do yeah. click on one of them because they're because you got to remember like social media aside it's like they're investing time to pay attention to you. Exactly. And it's like, oh, I like this, but when she does this segment or this, yeah. hey, this is a, a um, the backstory on this clip, I fucking, like, I just, I really like them because it's cool to understand the context. Like, people might be in love with that thing. Mm -hmm. So you know to give it more. Yeah. And it's a good feedback loop because you got to remember, it's, it's again, it's a time investment from yeah. them to you, from yeah. you to them. And, you, and time is you know the most valuable right. thing a person has you can never get your time back yeah and if someone is investing time and in following me on instagram i want to make sure that it's worth their time kind yes. of thing yeah. yeah do you have any other any other thoughts any other questions i think i would love to hear um how, more of how the algorithm actually works <laughs> from what you know <laughs> sure. or what you can sort of predict or right yeah so the challenge is that it's always changing what instagram's goal is is to say, it's the same thing with Facebook. Their goal is to say, hey, we know what you want to see better than better than anything. So what? Here's the problem, and what comes with that? So on Facebook in particular, they they know that they know what keeps keeps people on and keeps people engaged, and usually that is something that's controversial. So some 
po political thing or some whatever because they know. So they're the way they make money is you stay on the platform long. So if, if you stay on for seven minutes instead of four minutes, you've seen seven to 10, maybe 15 more ads than you would have, which means that someone paid for you to see those ads, which means that Instagram and Facebook got money. Yeah. All they care about is keeping people on as long as possible. So it'd be nice to think in the like wholesome world of it, which doesn't, unfortunately doesn't exist with a lot of it is like they would try and curate based on these are the things I find interesting or the hashtags I look up. And it does to a large extent, it tries to serve people content based on their previous viewing history mm -hmm. and what it predicts that they're going to want to see. But the unfortunate part of what kind of does happen again, more so on Facebook than Instagram is that me they know despite grandma's cookie thing <laughs> like if you put this in front of them you're going to get into a comment battle and, and go back and forth and scream at somebody which keeps you on way longer right. which keeps the engagement way higher which is how they make their money so it's a really weird slippery slope of like just not trusting anything that they <laughs> say I, and i really don't think that anybody should um sorry no i'm sorry <laughs> but because it's like all their only goal is to keep people on the longest and so that's that's how they make more money yeah so i think the stuff that they feed to the publishers and to the content producers is all about hey you know doesn't matter as much about the hashtags it's more about if we if we people think that if we think that people will interact best with your content we'll put you in discovery we'll put you into their feeds more often but it's very unpredictable and a lot of times what's been kind of passed down to the and consumer or the, or the advertisers, like we deploy it and we're like, that's not what you said. Mm. So I, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, what I would say is if you keep an eye at least every couple of weeks, three weeks or a month on what has been the thing that's made your yeah. thing perform. Yeah. Oh, I see, you know, I used, I only used three hashtags on these five posts and my organic reach was super low. And in talking persistent. about yeah. hashtags, how many do you recommend that you use in a post? Um, it's one of those things where like, if you asked me a year ago, I would have said 30. If you asked me six, the last if you asked me six months ago, I would say like 15 <laughs> or 10. Right now, um, depending on the account, we're somewhere between 10 and 15 for the most part. Wow. And what we're doing is we're just using the, the ones that are trending the best in that subject matter. And we're just deploying those. That's what we're seeing the best results on right now. But okay it could change so fast yeah so what i do is right. we use the apps that that aggregate and say oh i want it to be hashtag podcast or hashtag fashion and it's like oh okay here's the ones around you that are trending the highest yeah and we'll just grab a grouping of those and put them in um that's right now but again i think it's it's about keeping an eye on the analytics and experimenting because it changes all the time mm -hmm. and the, the justification for them is similar to like the way google works right you you get your site to the top of the first result and you're like oh my god it's amazing and then google's like well we think that this produces a better search result for you now and so all of a sudden the guy that's up here is like six spots down like his traffic drops like crazy but it's because google wants you to, to get the best search experience they want you to use their product the most and whatever the platforms think is going to make gonna you do use it. They're going to do whatever is in their best interest, yes. right? Yeah. So I would say those couple of kind of techniques to test and iterate and then just just do the same thing until it literally just stops working and then try <laughs> something else. Like that's how we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, con it's a constant battle though. And you think <laughs> that like how many times should you post? Do you think it's once a day or... The other day, ideally yeah. way more than any of us can actually get get around to like if you could post four or five times a day that would be a happy place i the platform would like that because you're feeding in but how do you do that it's so yeah. like it's almost impossible and you, you so you also want to yeah. be careful that i don't know like your like followers your are like yeah. oh my gosh it's too much and then yeah i mean you're constantly tugging at the fact that you know most of them aren't seeing the post so even if you post something like really similar throughout that day it's like you don't know who's actually going to see it. Yeah. What I would say is build community, do techniques that help really build deep engagement, talk, send messages, go to their stuff, like and comment on other people's stuff. That always helps because then that that drives a direct relationship between you and someone else who can then come and pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. That's like the only foolproof way. Um, but again, it's one of the, it takes time. Yeah. So, yeah. but I would say like, what I'm saying to a lot of people now, and, and even people that have millions of followers, I'm actually moving them off of Instagram. I'm saying, hey, 
let's get a text platform or an email marketing platform set up and get people opting into that so that you control the narrative. Yes. You can send, leave the, send someone the monthly mic digest about here's all the things that are going on. Here's a couple of videos I and curated. And knowing that they'll actually get it. It will be in front of their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you, but you have to, it's like, not like you can stop social, but I, I'm starting to feel the, the drop in reach. And so I'm actually moving a lot of people into email now, mm -hmm. Interesting. which is kind of weird, but it's really effective. You control the conversation. Yeah. You have to curate. It's a different type of content, but um, it's one of those things where like, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, if Instagram decides one picture that you put up once ever was inappropriate and shuts down your account, which is happening all the time nowadays, it's like email, then you have control. And if you switch and you start doing something else, you launch a product or you launch a different... You have all these email addresses, right? You've got yeah. people that want to hear from you mm -hmm. if you deliver the right content. So not to say don't use Instagram, you have to do it, um, but don't, don't rely fully on it because mm -hmm. it can be dangerous. And yeah. I know people, I know a lot of people that have had their like Facebook communities, 2 million people in their Facebook groups just gone yeah. out of nowhere. And that was their entire business. They've built up, you know, so, so much time and effort into this. Yeah. yeah. And you rely on something that it doesn't owe you anything, right? It's yeah, just a free exactly. thing. We're letting you do yeah. stuff, but it could take away your power at any time. So yeah. something to think about. Yeah. But um, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks right. so much for coming. Thank you so much Appreciate for having me. I'm so me. glad we got to do it. I'm so glad we got to do it. It's been a great chat. And awesome. yeah, you're so knowledgeable. I always love chatting with you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much. All right.